Help support Name Explain by liking this video, leaving a comment, and subscribing to the channel. In the heart of Moscow, the capital city of the largest country on our planet, lies St. Basil's Cathedral, built between 1555 and 1561 by order of the infamous Ivan the Terrible to celebrate one of his many victories in the battlefield. It stands at 156 feet tall and its uniquely colourful onion domes are a sight to behold. Legend even tells that the architects of the cathedral were blinded once construction was complete to make sure they would never build anything as or more beautiful ever again. It certainly is a building that could be described with one simple word, wonder. Despite how amazing a sight it is to behold and the rich history that's taking place within and around it, it seems to never have been deemed the wonder of the world. Meanwhile, this bloody pile of rocks in Wiltshire of all places have been seen as a wonder of the world for hundreds of years. Now tell me, from looking at St. Basil's and Stonehenge side by side, which one do you think looks more wondrous? Okay, fine, maybe I'm being a little bit too harsh on poor old Stonehenge. It's not its fault it's so dull to look at. I'm sure you've all heard of the seven wonders of the world. You may even have different ideas as to what these seven wonders are, and trust me there's a reason for that we'll get onto in a moment. When it was suggested that I make a video about the wonders of the world, at first I just thought I'd go the usual route, make a list style video explaining how all seven wonders got their name. Though as I delved into the subject, I thought it would be much more fun to look into this wondrous nomenclature. Let's not wonder how these wonders of the world got their names, but wonder why these things got to be called world wonders, while others don't get the title of world wonder, so technically I am still explaining names, well titles I ought to say, but they're still kind of a name I guess. Also if you do want to see that video of just looking into how the world wonders got their actual names let me know, or just google it yourself, that's what I do. So what exactly are the seven wonders of the world? Well that's where some of the issues come into place. Take a look at this map of world wonders from Wikipedia. You do not need to be a genius to realise there are way more than seven landmarks that have been dubbed world wonders on our planet. In fact, Wiki's list of world wonders has more than seven separate lists of seven wonders of the world. But fear not however, as we won't be looking into all of these lists. In fact, there's primarily two lists of seven world wonders that I feel are most popular. They're the seven wonders of the ancient world and the new seven wonders wonders of the world. The seven wonders of the ancient world are the Great Pyramid of Giza, the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, the Temple of Artemis at Ephesus, the Statue of Zeus at Olympia, the Mausoleum at Halicarnassus, the Colossus of Rhodes, and the Lighthouse of Alexandria. Of all these ancient wonders, only one still stands to this day, the Great Pyramid of Giza, and it's the oldest of the bunch, which shows us just how incredible the Egyptians were. The new seven wonders of the world, however, are the Great Wall of China, Petra, Christ the Redeemer, Machu Picchu, Chichen Itza, the Colosseum, and the Taj Mahal. Of course, unlike the ancient wonders, all of these landmarks still stand to this day. Though, as well as these two lists, there are more other niche lists of seven wonders of the world. You may have noticed that from these two lists, there were no natural wonders, and that's because natural wonders seem to have their own lists, including the likes of the Grand Canyon, Mount Everest, and Halong Bay. Other lists celebrate more modern man made constructs, like the American Society of Civil Engineers list, including the Channel Tunnel and the Empire State Building, and the seven wonders of the industrial world which includes the likes of the Hoover Dam, the Bell Rock Lighthouse and even the sewage system of London. There's also the seven wonders of the underwater world which includes the Great Barrier Reef and deep sea vents and even the seven wonders of the solar system including things like Olympus Mons, the Rings of Saturn and the Great Red Spot of Jupiter. You name it, there's a list of wonders for it. And some of these lists contain more abstract ideas for wonders as opposed to usual fancy buildings or breathtaking nature. Things like the Aurora Borealis, the Great Migration of the Serengeti and even the internet have have been dubbed wonders of the world. How are these lists of seven wonders even compiled? We won't be looking into all of these lists in detail, but by and large these niche lists are made by places who are interested in them, e.g. the seven wonders of the solar system list was created by astronomy magazine. However, let's just stick to those two most popular lists I mentioned, the seven wonders of the ancient world and the new seven wonders of the world. The seven wonders of the ancient world were decided upon when they wouldn't have been as ancient, but still pretty old. The earliest recording of these landmarks being compiled into wonders comes from 225 BC by Philo Byzantium. In his writings on the seven wonders, he used the term fermata, which would have meant things to be seen slash must-sees in Greek. Other ancient historians like Herodotus, Diodorus of Sicily, Callimachus of Salini, and Strabo, who will be familiar to listeners of my podcast AD History, go listen, all too wrote about the Seven Wonders. I even read that these would have been compiled and used as guides for tourists, which in all honesty is incredible. In all this time looking into ancient history, it never occurred to me that tourism was a thing in the ancient past. However, it seems that people who picked these wonders didn't travel as much themselves, as this explains to us why all these ancient wonders of the world are around or near the Mediterranean Sea. See? 
and these seven wonders were cemented by Greek poet Antipater of Sidon in one of his poems. However, he mentioned the walls of Babylon as opposed to the lighthouse of Alexandria. His poem goes, I've set eyes on the walls of lofty Babylon, on which is a road for chariots, and the statue of Zeus by the Alpheus, and the hanging gardens, and the colossus of the sun, and the huge labour of the high pyramids, and the vast tomb of Morsulus. But when I saw the house of Artemis that mounted to the clouds, those other marvels lost their brilliance, and I said, Lo, apart from Olympus, the sun never looked on aught so grand. So what about the new seven wonders of the world? Well, their story is a lot more recent. The new seven wonders foundation was created in Switzerland in 2000, and they started a campaign to elect seven new world wonders. They did this simply because the initial world was so old and much more had been created in that time, and pretty much all the ancient wonders had gone. So from this point, an online vote was held and reportedly over 100 billion votes were cast over the phone, text, and online. Finally, in 2007, the results were revealed and the aforementioned new seven wonders were chosen. Some other finalists that didn't make it into the top seven were the Statue of Liberty, the Acropolis of Athens, and the Moai. Despite being voted on, this still sparked some anger, as whole continents like Africa and Australia were left with no world wonders to their name. So, why is it that these things have been dubbed wonders of the world? What defining feature does something need so it can be called a world wonder? Well, there really isn't any official guidelines. It's not like someone has to come along and confirm it's a wonder like with the Guinness World Records or anything like that. It doesn't have to be a certain size or have to be a certain age? Hey, Christ the Redeemer isn't even a hundred years old yet. Construction was only completed in 1931. Compare that to the oldest of the new seven wonders, the Great Wall of China, which is from the 700s BC. Though it seems there is one thing that ties all these together in some bureaucratic sense. They're all man-made, and that's because on the whole, natural wonders tend to have their own lists. The New Seven Wonders Foundation even have their own New Seven Wonders of Nature list that was completed in 2011. It all seems to be about human perspective and our interpretation as to what is a wonder. It's really hard to explain. The word wonder in itself is defined as a feeling of great surprise and admiration caused by seeing or experiencing something that's strange and new, and to me, that really sounds like something that can't be decided upon any numerical metric or data, which makes voting on what is a wonder or not a little silly in my eyes anyway. One article I read had a really good definition as to what they felt made us humans want to call something a wonder of the world. The author said a world wonder should be iconic, symbolise as a chapter of human history, be one of a kind, and have a wow factor. They also said, finally, there's the ineffable. A wonder of the world must embody a sense of magic and mystery. It should be a place that grows more intriguing with time, like a complex and beguiling character mess on our travels. We should feel inspired by the relationship and bid farewell with genuine regret. And after reading that statement, I kind of understand why the internet is considered a world wonder. However, is being called a wonder of the world always a good thing? Another article I read looked into the New Seven Wonders campaign and found out that for a landmark to gain support, it had to have an official committee to back them, which included a roughly $200 entry fee. This fee was supposedly put in place to deter people from adding joke entries and to help with administration costs. While $200 may not be too much for many nations and parts of the world to pay, in other parts of the world this would be a large sum to pay, in the hopes that your landmark might end up on a list. This could explain to us why select landmarks won the wonder title in their vote, and while other nations and continents aren't present. This article has some great quotes like asking if Pharaoh Khufu had to register the pyramids to get them into the original list of seven wonders. It ends with stating that a wonder should be measured according to personal delight, and not because that sect or society has access access to the internet, likes to vote and believes lists really matter, condescends to determine what is and isn't wonderful, and I really agree with this, there's just something so silly about putting something like wonder to a public vote. Lelen Sois in Brazil wasn't allowed to be part of the vote due to not having paid the $200 and having backing. Instead, Christ the Redeemer was chosen for Brazil. How this article also ends with the writer enjoying themselves more or less alone in this national park, while the majority of tourists flock to the Redeemer due to its world wonder status. This can really become an issue too. Dubbing something a world wonder can raise tourist numbers to uncomfortable levels and raise expectations to immeasurable levels. And while bringing money to a part of the world can be a good thing, it can bring sky high admissions to things that were once free, tacky expensive souvenirs, and even people in the area trying to sell you junk, and possibly even petty crimes like pickpockets. If you've ever been to a world wonder or a famous landmark, there's a chance you were either somewhat disappointed by it, crammed in with many other tourists, someone tried to sell you some rubbish, or all of the above. Though there's one question that really needs to be answered. 
Why seven wonders? Seven is a number that's always been seen as important in history. There's the seven days in the week, the seven deadly sins, and of course seven is seen as a lucky number. The Greeks and other ancient people saw seven as a number that represented perfection, so this may be why they chose just seven wonders. I also read it may relate to the amount of planets they knew of, these being the five planets of Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter and Saturn that they knew of, plus the sun and moon. However, my favourite theory as to why there are only seven wonders is because that's all the impressive landmarks they knew about. It was so far back in history that the rest of the wonders we debate about today weren't even a thing yet. Nevertheless, it is the number 7 that people lashed onto when wanting to dub a group of things wonders of the world. Whether those people be ancient Greeks trying to sell an ancient lonely planet, or a Swiss foundation trying to get into the tourism game by setting up lists and polls to engage in the public conscious. Though in all honesty, their opinions don't really matter to you. Call whatever you want a world wonder, whether that be something grand or historic, or your childhood home. If it makes you happy, it truly is something of a wonder. However, I'm kind of a sucker for a list, so that's why we're going to make our own seven wonders list, that being the seven wonders of the internet. What would you put on that list? The Seven Wonders was suggested by Grey Computer, and thanks to their suggestion, they will now be honoured as name explains patron saint of the Seven Wonders. Do you have a good idea for somewhere that name could be covered in a name explain video? If so, then please consider donating on Patreon. Just one dollar a month helps keep the channel running and earns you a weekly chance to suggest somewhere to be turned into a video, and you too could be a name explain Patreon saint. Thank you to all my patrons who support Name Explain on a monthly basis. Name Explain depends on small monthly donations from fans like you to help keep the channel running. Just the small amount of $2 a month helps in a huge way, grants you patron exclusive Name Explain extras, and gets your name here with all these awesome people. Thank you. Hello all and thank you so much for reaching the end of the video. Stick around and check out another video and subscribe to stay up to date on all things Name Explain. You can follow myself on Twitter at NameExplainYT. Follow me there and tweet the name Alexander at me so you came from this message. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and once again, thank you all so much.